the environment you are born, is more or less what we learn and what we expect and what we follow. Uh, in many ways, uh, I was born very much like you, not very far from where you were born. And I was born in a house where I saw the conflict of religions. I could see clearly my Jewish family could not eat on the same table as my Islamic family. What taught the Prince of Baha'i Faith and at the end I came not to rebel but I came to see is another path of abuse. And in so many ways it also decides to what extent you want to go. I sat and I watched many times in my young age, my Muslim uncles and family, by accident, turning up at the house where my Jewish cousins are where, and they wash the dishes ten times, or they hand, or they close, because they touch the Jew. I witnessed at the age of six, seven, when I was, I went to an uncle, a cousin of my family, and I watched them washing the plates so rigorously. I said to my mom, what is she doing? He says, because uh, we are Baha'is, they, they consider us as dirty, and because I'm a Jewish background, she washes it seven times, that is clean, not touched by a Jew. As you know, in the Islamic religion, they call it six Vajab, which is about six length of the hand, finger, what you call it, small finger to the top, and they consider it to be washed. And I, I never understood how come, if my mom is a Jew and they invite us, or a Jewish background, she's quiet, why do they invite us and then they go through all this rigorous washing and cleaning? Don't invite us, then don't do all this stupid thing. And my father used to say, it's for them to mature. It doesn't mean because she's my cousin, I cannot love her or be here because of our childhood. But it's, I love your mom and she comes from a Jewish background, and it's for love of both, I, I take the both. And I watched this many times. I became aware of the conflict in religion at a very young age, very young age. And then I saw more abuse. I watched many, many times Mullahs who came and took their frock off and they became normal people because they didn't want to become Mullahs, they didn't want to teach because they couldn't see the light. I witnessed many times, in, in my parents' house, Mullahs with their families come from different cities, and they take their frocks off, and they become, they walk out as normal man after staying in the house for a few days, and then they could find a job, and they could be placed somewhere. And I realized, man of faith, is the soul of the man, not the man himself. I asked my father, why do we see these mullahs coming and changing clothes? He says, they don't even know why they exist in that frock. And then we saw the change in the revolution. Many people just put the frock on because it was a path to learn or earn what they wanted to do. I have respect for all the religions because at the end of the day, I brought the religions to be what it became later on. But, it's us to understand. I watched, I married a Catholic, and I watched the same abuse. And then it became more and more, with Caroline, that the fallacy of the abuse has different names. Very much the only way I can consider it, or I explain it to a lot of people, I call one faith, as a sexual abuse, one faith as a physical abuse, and one faith as a, what I call, a psychological abuse. And all the religions have found a way of abuse of the man, the soul of the man in dimension of physicality. And as soon as we, we, we open our eyes, we'll see behind the, all of them. They're all one. And that was the first message given to Moses. There's only one Creator. And 
very soon we will see they come together, it will be the end, the peace on this planet has started. Because it's our wish. But we got to realize something, that the strength of wanting to be peaceful, is much stronger than those who want to be the intermediary between the soul of the man and the physical life of the man which wants to be peaceful. And this will be turned over. In the coming time, in the coming time you will see, as I said very recently, what are we going to do with all these temples? What are we going to do with all these properties, the churches, the mosques and the synagogues only? Don't forget, none of them pay any taxes, so it's a net profit. They bought as much land as they could, and they've been given to the fear of getting better position in heaven by those who are weak in character. What are we going to do with all these properties which becomes available? Are we going to make nation by nation decision? Or are we going to make a decision as one nation? What are we going to do with all these properties which has been collected by the abuse of the man in the name of the religions. In one calculation, there is an estimate runs into percentage of the total assets of the world, is held by those who use the name of the faith and have used it over centuries. So, what we see is a collective abuse of our grandparents and great-grandparents and parents and their parents and their parents. One thing which the One Nation Councils, the Earth Council, Universal Council, have to contemplate on, as part of, as I said, they become part of the Keshe Foundation work, and they are becoming there, as we are there to support them to achieve it, is, what are we going to do with all these resources, the wealth, which has been collected in pennies and cents and whatever, by the abuses of the soul of our ancestors? What are we going to do with them? How is it going to be shared for the gold which is taken from Filipino South America and has been bought as shares of the companies in New York or in London? There has to become a consensus. We have to find a solution, total solution, for what I call the financial investment of the, our ancestors in the dimension of the abuse of the soul of them and ours. The problem is moving, the problem is there, and it has to be handled. How are we going to return all the abuse, whatever taken like on a regular basis from Far East, like Philippines and Thailand and the rest, in the name of the Church, and buildings which are built in Rome and New York on the name of the Catholic Church, or different mosques, or the whatever. What about the properties which are given to these organizations and this path of uh, abuse? Then, you'll see one thing. There is no alternative but one nation. You'll see no alternative, but accepting that we have investors from Philippines in New York and in Rome, and we all have to be benefited by it. It's a very, very interesting challenge. Sorry about that, my little boy is here. Every time we talk straight and correct, he has something to say. The reality is, there is a number of positions which are coming up, that we have to understand. These are the dilemmas which are rising very, very fast. Palestinians and Jews are of the same blood. They came from the same blood. Christians and the Jews are of the same blood. So, how can we find all these to be corrected? A lot of people would oppose a lot of end of the faith, the way we see it, because they're afraid of the abuses which will going to open up, which has been done in the past. The only solution is left, to forgive. We have no other choice, because 
is not one abusing the other. We all have abused everybody at the same time and together and one way or another, we referred it to the other one not to show us. This is what it comes to as one nation. To become one nation, we need to close our eyes to a lot of the wrongdoings of ourselves and our forefathers. And a lot of abuses which is done in the name of the Creator by those who could see us weak. I attended Fabio's funeral and I attended his memorial. And Carol and I, we sat and watched and we literally were gobsmacked. We were absolutely shocked. How the soul of the boy, such a beautiful soul, had time limit. The priest had one hour, exactly one hour he closed the session. Was the soul of this boy so worthless? Or was it higher than the priest? Or has it become a business? And it's all business, how we can rub, in the name of God. Which, at the end of it, is us. The change into one nation, one planet, which will take shape in different ways this year and the coming time, will force us to face these. We have to change these. And the only alternative left is somewhere a compromise that we were stupid enough to let us abuse us, and abuse our forefathers, but in a way the ones who abused us is part of us. Like us, I came from the Islamic in the most holiest city in Iran. These priests, these mullahs, these rabbis, are not born to be. They are the product of the nature of the environment we have created. So, becoming one nation is not just teaching the soul, the understanding how to exist, is to understand how much we need to compromise. How much we have to close the doors of the past with the knowledge, not to leave things behind the door, but knowing what's the, in the inventory of the things behind, and starting to live in a new house. I've been to Vatican. And I've felt the pain. The funniest thing is, all these so-called religious people are fully aware of what they're abusing. The only thing is, they don't want to admit the level of abuse. As a priest said to me once, I'm not a child master, I don't abuse children. And I said to him, but you abuse the soul of the man, it's the same way. The position with us, with change of new technology and bringing up the new one nation, one planet, we have to do a lot of work and have a lot of strength to see the time has come for change to the conduct of the soul of the man, not the physicality. I watch many, many revolutions, many things are happening at this moment around the world. And I watch how this change compared to the past. And I watch how much man's maturity is leading to it. We're becoming mature, we're becoming more aware of. But now in the physical awareness has to become to awareness of the soul of the man and then opening of the universal community into man. Would man mature in the night or would man mature in another thousand years? Would those who mature have to wait for totality or we become part of that totality become matured faster? All of it, it depends on us.
as a human race. I taught you today how to feed yourself. For those of you, I know many, many of you will start doing it and see. Start with one taste, one vision, one understanding. And then when you achieved it, the next one. Start understanding the operation of your soul, the operation of your physicality in respect to the soul, and operate through the soul of physicality, which is the heart and the lung, to give to the soul of the humanity of your own body, that by giving, it creates new position. In a way from now on, when you eat, it's not just an orange or a potato, it'll be the soul elevation of what I can give to the soul of myself. Using the soul of physicality, to convert it into the soul elevation of your own soul, and then you understand. This is the purpose of teaching you about star formation and magra systems. This is the reason I teach this way, because the common man can understand. Some of you got touched by having a free energy system. Even I gave you the free energy system, you don't see it. You look for a medical application, I gave you the system, all of you, every man who has ever heard or followed the teaching of the Keshe Foundation, you all can live without any pain for the rest of your life, or any diseases, but understand the essence of the teaching. Walk through your soul, and not through the physicality to touch the soul of the physicality. Or at least learn to start with, to walk through the soul of the physicality to change the physical. As a man, we suffer. This is a part of physicality, because of the interaction of the filters so much. When you walk through your own home, your body continuously has to interact with every field, the chair, the table, every cell on the carpet, every cell on the spoon, the fridge and everything else. It's a continuous battle, living in an inertial environment. But in deep space, when in space, it's not so much a battle, that's why your cells don't need the innovation, that's why you last and live longer. This is the problem with living with the enforced environment. In the space we have all the still the same fields, but it's open to what we want to take. It's not encaged, and it's not encaged. When you're encaged, you have to give and take. Look at your aura, you see all sorts of colors. These colors come because not coming out of your body, because the chair wants this one, the bed wants another one, the fridge wants something else, and depends where the fridge and the freezers are, then your aura is different, because of what they pull on you. And the one who wants to abuse it, they say, oh, this is something wrong with your kidney, there and something wrong with your liver. But did you take the same picture where the fridge and the freezer was behind me, what I was giving, what I was taking? We have to start opening our eyes in a bigger dimension in the totality, and then we start seeing, we start, then we become in charge of our own physical dimension, then we can travel the span of the universe. I promise you, I didn't come here with a spaceship, I came through the soul of the man. Nobody landed, no one, but we travel the space of the universe through the expansion and the knee of the soul of the man, or any being. Try to understand the teachings from now on in depth, not just by words. Teachings from now on becomes very intensive, but it's what is needed to go through the evolution of the change to be able to travel the spans of the we still make the ganses, and we still make the spaceships, and we still do everything else. But, if you are real entity of being, entity of the universal community, I have given you all the knowledge, it's your choice. Would you like a donkey, or would you like to be in the jumbo jet? But now, if you want to travel in the spaceship, or in the spaceship of the soul of the man, According to your intelligence, you choose. 
but at least this time you can't be abused. We call it a day, it's nearly three and a half hours. And try to come and to understand more about totality, the soul, the physicality, the operation of the systems and knowledge of the creation in all of the teachings in the past time. 2018 is time of maturity of the man. And we have started it. It's for you to expand your horizon, not for us to push you. Because if I push you, this is what it is, we create another temple. If it's done by you, you decide when and how and what you want to take from it. Thank you very much for today. And hopefully we meet on the 2,206 teaching next week. And ready. But be ready for a change and be ready to see a lot of changes on the international scene because we have wished for it and because of it we will achieve it. Thank you very much. Mr. Kesh, uh, I think by next week we can uh, we can present the uh, constitution in Farsi. You're quite uh, welcome. We asked you. Yes, we Dr. Patrick and I be working on it. I think by next week it should be ready. You're quite welcome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Rick. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kesh, once again, of course. And uh, thank you to all our listeners and people participating in the workshop. And this is the 205th Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, January 4th, 2018. And we'll end the live stream and end our uh, Zoom meeting for today. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next week.